Good afternoon, Missouri City. Welcome to the Wednesday, June 2nd COVID-19 News Conference. I'm your Mayor, Robin Alicat. As we are all aware, Governor Greg Abbott lifted the statewide mask mandate recently. The city is following the order across all operations to make sure that we comply with the state law. In addition, your city officials and staff are looking around to make sure that we protect our well-being of our citizens, stakeholders, and staff. We are still monitoring updates on the pandemic. We're still observing public health safety guidelines, and we are still partnering with our local health authority. Dr. Joe Anzandula to make the business decision based on the medical data that's provided. We are now at a point in the, in the country where all adults and children 12 and older are eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. In Missouri City, there are about 30 approved vaccination providers, including local pharmacies. For the full list, please visit our city's website, www.missouricitytx.gov. For our discussion today, we're joined by Dr. Joe Anzandula, our interim city manager, Bill Atkinson, and our fire and rescue services, Chief Mario Partita. We will also have our standard Q&A session at the end of this conference to make sure that we answer all your important questions as well. Thank you to all of you for your continued support and partnership throughout this COVID-19. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Joe Anzandula, who has some important medical advice as it relates to the new state order. Thank you, Mayor, for inviting me to, to uh, address the uh, citizens of, the, of Missouri City. So we have a lot of data, so I'm going to get, get right to it. Um, we are doing really well right now in Fort Bend County in our area. Just to let you know that as of yesterday, um, we were totaling out at 50, 58,909 uh, confirmed cases. Uh, our deaths thus far is 651, but definitely flattening out. Our case fatality rate remains low and flat at 1.0. Um, our bed usage in Fort Bend County is actually the lowest it's been in a long, long time, and that's very reassuring. For instance, uh, general beds in our county, um, when you consider that there's over 600 operational beds, only 30 of those beds are being occupied by COVID-19 patients. And the better news is of the 122 operational ICU beds, we only have four that are being occupied right now by COVID-19 patients. We haven't had those numbers in, in many, many months, so that's great news. So hospitalizations in our area continue to be on the decline. Some more data for our uh, Fort Bend County area. For the 12 year and older crowd, um, we have 54% fully vaccinated and about 64% have received one dose. For the 65 and older crowd, for fully vaccinated, we have 83.4% and 90, 94% for uh, one, one dose. So we're doing really good. In fact, we're doing better than the national average for vaccination rates. Uh, and in fact, this county, Fort Bend County, has one of the highest vaccinations rate in the state of Texas. And a few, a few weeks ago, we were actually number one for the highest vaccination rate. So kudos to our um, leadership in Fort Bend County and our great health department that, that we have here in, in this county. Um, as you know, on, on uh, May the 10th, the FDA did expand EUA granting Pfizer the permission to administer COVID-19 vaccine to children 12 years, uh, 12 to 15 years. Um, and of course, it was already up to 18, 18 and over. So that age group is now being approved for vaccination. That's for Pfizer. Um, Moderna, uh, current studies are indicating the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine is about 96% effective in the 12 to 17 year old group and is currently awaiting FDA approval. So we have at least one vaccine that can be given to 12 years and over. Um, on, uh, on May 13th, um, the CDC updated their guidance with respect to fully vaccinated individuals, allowing these individuals to stop wearing masks or practice physical distancing outdoors. And in most 
indoor setting. So there are some exceptions. And those exceptions are high-risk environments such as planes, buses, trains, and other forms of public transportation, as well as uh, correctional facilities and homeless shelters. Also, the exemption includes uh, going to the doctor, uh, doctor's offices and hospitals and nursing homes. So the CDC's recommendations apply only to full vaccinated individuals and do not apply to unvaccinated or partially vaccinated individuals. Five days later, May the 18th, uh, Governor Abbott issued his executive order GA36, and I'm gonna quote what, the, what it says. It states that, quote, no governmental entity, including a county, city, school district, and public health authority, and no governmental agency may require any person to wear a mask covering or to mandate that another person wear a mask covering. Again, there are some exceptions, and those exceptions include state-supported, owned and operated hospitals, as well as living centers and TDC correctional facilities. With respect to public schools, the governor's executive order stated that after June the 4th, after this date, no student, teacher, parent, or other staff member or visitor may be required to wear a face covering. Um, Another thing that um, I want to talk about is CDC coming out and saying that antibody testing is not useful to prove immunity among vaccinated people. So they recently advised against antibody testing for SARS-CoV-2 to determine immunity or protection from COV, uh, from COVID-19. So essentially testing does not identify people that have been, uh, have developed antibodies because of the vaccination. It's only identifying antibodies from those people that were actually infected. Um, <clears throat> The other thing that I want to talk about briefly is what has just come out, actually came out a few days ago. It's the CDC guidance for operating youth camps. Um, and I cannot go through the entire uh, litany of, uh, of, of uh, recommendations. Those can be found on the CDC website. But I do want to point out a few that I think are very important for you all to know. So everyone aged 12 years and older, it's recommended to be vaccinated against COVID-19 as soon as possible to keep from getting and spreading COVID-19. For camps where everyone is fully vaccinated prior to the start of the camp, it is safe to return to full capacity without masking and without physical distancing, except if required by federal, state, and local regulations. While generally encouraging the unvaccinated to wear face masks, the CDC said campers should leave them off during outdoor activities like boating or swimming that could get uh, where they can get the masks wet. Mask use indoors is strongly recommended for people who are not fully vaccinated, including children. No children under the age of two should be wearing a mask. So in general, people do not need to wear masks when outdoors. However, particularly in areas of substantial high transmission, people are not fully vaccinated are encouraged to wear a mask in crowded outdoor settings or during activities that involve sustained close contact with other people who are not fully vaccinated. And then finally, um, people who are fully vaccinated with no COVID-19 like symptoms do not need to be quarantined or restricted from camp following an exposure to someone with suspected or confirmed 19, except what's required by local regulations. And that's all I have for the for the uh, data. Thank you very much. And I'll be around to answer um, questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anzandola. Now we have our interim city manager, Bill Atkinson, will join to discuss protocols in the cities and the municipal court and other key updates on how cities operations are moving forward. Bill. Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to uh, first start by expressing my gratitude to the exceptional job that the employees of the Missouri City have taken in uh, taking care of the residents and the uh, customers that we have and have had throughout this pandemic, uh, operating at the highest level and ensuring that the services that we provide to you continue as best they could during those times. We're now coming past that or getting through this era. And uh, with that, in accordance with the governor's recent uh, order, the city now cannot, as uh, the doctor had mentioned, mandate masks uh, in city facilities. 
However, we are continuing to uh, have you social distance, take precautions as they relate to taking temperatures coming into city facilities, as well as having hand washing stations available for people who uh, wish to do so. Uh, one area that this does not apply to is in the courts, municipal courts. In the municipal courts, the uh, state the Texas State uh, Supreme Court has made a decision that through August, uh, the uh, they continue to order that they supersede the governor on with respect to the uh, court, the municipal courts. They allow the judge to uh, determine if a mask is necessary or should be worn in the court areas. And at this time, it's been determined that the masking will continue to take place at a municipal court in Missouri City. And finally, we have, uh, we mentioned the, the day camps that take place. We also have our Quail Valley City Center and uh, golf course where uh, we are at 100% operation and also uh, do not require or cannot require masking. And so uh, for the, both the restaurant, the uh, eating facilities, the banquet facilities, they are in full operation as well as the golf course. So just wanted to update you again from uh, the operational side of what is taking place with Missouri City. And again, I uh, want to thank the staff for the exceptional job they've done during this time. And I will, uh, at this moment, uh, turn it back over to the mayor and be happy to answer any questions later. Thank you, Bill. Now we have our fire chief, Mario Partita, will join us to share EOC and other public safety updates. Mario. Thank you, Mayor. I want to provide you some information on our emergency response levels and what we're doing with COVID at this time, as well as uh, uh, the status of our fire stations open to the public. The Emergency Operations Center has been downgraded or has been downgraded for, for a few weeks to a level three, which is the lowest level. We are in a uh, monitoring and support position where we continue to provide information through communications on the website, uh, as well as through our, our, our phone number to, to reach us for any needs related to COVID-19. We monitor and participate occasionally in county and state conference calls uh, so that we remain uh, informed on what's going on uh, in regard to COVID. From emergency fire and EMS response, we continue to uh, make calls related to COVID, but we also make other calls uh, such as medical, uh, other medical emergencies, motor vehicle accidents, and also fires. Uh, one thing that you'll see as our fire personnel are still responding to these calls, they still have requirements to protect themselves and protect our citizens from, from uh, other biohazards and other infectious diseases. So you'll still see them wearing masks and gloves, uh, safety glasses, and occasionally, depending on the call, you still might see them in a gown uh, just to protect everyone on scene. So that's based on the level of care needed, but that's part of our protocols outlined by our medical director and that keeps everyone safe. Regarding PPE kits and supplies, we still have uh, uh, an abundance of PPE kits, personal PPE kits that are available and you can reach us through our website or you can call 281-403-8500 and we can get you one of those personal PPE kits. We will also be making available the PPE kits at our upcoming, the city's upcoming Juneteenth events and at the Independence Day weekend events. So we'll have those available for free uh, for our citizens and for those attending those events. From an emergency management standpoint, uh, we're guiding, we're providing guidance uh, and really just providing direction on where uh, promoters and individuals that are planning events on where they could go to find the most current and up-to-date information on what they need to do for their event. Uh, so you can call us also at that number again for that same information, 281-403-8500. And in closing, I'd like to say that we're very pleased to announce that all our fire stations are open. Uh, we are beginning to attend community events, such as block parties, HOA meetings, uh, and, and we're welcoming citizens into our stations. If you go to our website on the fire page, there's a form that you can fill out uh, to schedule your event, and we'd be glad to either send you a fire truck or have you visit one of our stations. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back to the mayor. Thank you, Chief Portita, and thank you all for watching. Uh, these discussions will continue to be on our outlet for City Council and for me to keep everyone informed on COVID updates and to protect our community at large. Now we have our questions and answers session. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, please post your
please post your questions under the comment section on Facebook and we will have the staff respond to you. So we'll take any questions right now. Mayor, may we please ask Interim City Manager Bill Atkinson to come back up for a few questions? Absolutely. Mr. Atkinson, what guidelines does the city have in place for local youth who are attending our summer camp programs? So we will continue to have some distancing and we will provide the information via our uh, website as well as the forms that are provided for uh, registration of the programs. You may also contact our Parks and Recreation Division to get additional information about that. Uh, and we'll continue to update the information as we work with Dr. Anzandula and others who uh, may have changes that take place during that time. Again, uh, things are, are fairly wide open, but we will continue to use social distancing and be mindful of the safety of your children. Thank you, sir. And also, some cities are offering vaccination incentives, such as lotteries, event tickets, vacation trips. Is Missouri City planning to offer any vaccination incentives, primarily as it relates to employees? Uh, we have not. And uh, at this point in time, uh, we've seen a pretty good rate of our employees being vaccinated, uh, but we do not have any intention at this time of doing so. Mr. Atkinson, is there a protocol for any city officials or staff who want to continue voluntarily wearing masks during official meetings and business work days? Yes, uh, again, voluntarily they may. The city may not require someone to wear those masks per the uh, order of the governor. And sir, what policy does the city have in place for staff to continue monitoring pandemic data with Dr. Anzal Dua to ensure the public health safety and well-being of all employees, visitors, and vendors. We get uh, weekly reports from Dr. Anzandula and, and also any that may uh, come more, uh, more quickly than a week in which we need to know. We stay in constant contact with him, and so we're taking any precautions necessary as he advises us to and keeping an eye on that. We continue to uh, inform council of, of those uh, changes if necessary, but as the doctor was mentioning, uh, things are looking up with respect to uh, COVID and the uh, rate in which we're seeing uh, residents uh, with infection going down. So in addition to the temperature checks that your staff is doing, can you also mention the social distancing measures the city, city still has in place? And also the fact that you all have the availability of hand sanitizer for individuals who used to, to use it and also your point about the masks still being worn by people who wish to do so. Sure, we will continue with uh, the public meetings that we have to uh, space people, uh, social, do social distancing to space people out, and uh, we'll continue to do so per the guidelines that uh, are recommended for us. And again, that is more to uh, make people feel comfortable with, with respect to uh, being at the meetings. And then also we do have the san uh, hand sanitizer stations available to the public. And uh, we also have temperature checks when you come into a facility that we uh, are afford you when you come in. And then uh, again, we will uh, continually let people know when things might change or if they do have to change as a result of our uh, communication with Dr. Anzandula and the uh, different uh, changes that may take place over time. Mr. Atkinson, the city has for a while had a policy in place to frequently clean common areas for staff and visitors. Is that still taking place? And if so, what is the, the protocol for doing that? Yes, we do have in place uh, protocol. We do, uh, year, throughout the year, we continue to clean, but we have stepped that up during times of COVID in which we are uh, clean more frequently and with a different type of uh, substance that uh, is for dis uh, disinfection. And then also when we've had reports of uh, COVID uh, amongst the, the employees, then we have cleaned those areas. We also do a fogging uh, with the, uh, during the month and uh, make sure that those areas are clean for both the uh, employees as well as the residents and customers that we serve. And can you briefly explain, sir, the current protocol for individuals who rent city facilities, such as the community center or rooms at the city center at Quell Valley? Yes, uh, we do have protocols in place and they will advise you of any that uh, are necessary for you to follow. And uh, right now, as I mentioned, uh, we are at full operation, 
but if there are uh, different uh, things that have to be done, such as uh, we are continuing to serve buffet style, uh, so that or to the table, excuse me, where uh, the uh, people do not have to stand in line for a buffet, and uh, also we are uh, bringing uh, smaller amounts of uh, uh, bread and uh, condiments to the table, so that people. Uh, don't have to get up and get as much. So again, we'll continue to operate that way until necessary, uh, and, and hopefully uh, we'll be seeing change in that soon. But uh, again, we'll continue to do that for your safety. And sir, is the Recreation and Tennis Center at full capacity as well? We are. Yes, we are. And with the activities that kids are taking, and as we mentioned with respect to the uh, day camps that are taking place, we have protocols that will be put in place. And uh, again, I would recommend you call the rec, and rec Center and they can provide you information if you have additional questions, as well as on the forms, there will be uh, information about the steps we're taking with regard to summer programs. Thank you so much, Mr. Atkinson. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, uh, Mayor Elkat, may we please have Chief Partita come back to the podium for a few questions? One of the major questions that uh, many individuals are asking, Chief, is what are cities doing with its stock of PPE? And I know you touched on that a little bit, but can you expand on that answer as well? Yes, ma'am. So each city has their own uh, supply of PPE, whether it was a, a kind of an overage or depending on what supplies they received. So the Missouri City, we, we have a, a large amount of PPE available, and they're, they're sectioned off in personal kits uh, with, with hand sanitizer, mask, and some other items in there. So we have several available, and we'll continue to distribute at different events and donating uh, throughout the city as well. And can you touch upon, um, Chief, what the current protocol for the city is in regards to members of the public or groups who would like to tour or visit city facilities such as fire stations? Yes. As I mentioned in my report, our fire stations are open. We are accepting guests. Uh, we only ask that you go through the, through the uh, city website to schedule your, your visit because uh, fire trucks and squad units, they're, they're out and about making calls. Uh, they're training, so they want to be there when you're coming. Uh, as well as we are attending events. We're attending fireworks displays. We're attending uh, community events. And so we're, we're out in the community uh, trying to safely engage our citizens. Is the city still receiving inquiries from seniors and senior centers for PPE, and how is that being handled? Occasionally. We're, that's kind of uh, gone down a little, but we do receive occasional requests for PPE, and we've, we've actually done deliveries if we need to do that. So we want to make sure that we get them in the hands of our seniors, uh, so we'll do everything we can to make sure they get what they need. Is the city participating in pandemic outreach initiatives uh, or community initiatives where that type of material would be handed to the public at large? Yeah, I think our focus has been primarily all the events that are, that are ongoing in the city, and we want to partner with those, with those uh, events. And so we, every time we see one, we try to engage a promoter or we try to engage uh, someone at the city that's, that's scheduling that event and to see how we could participate and bring some of the PPE out. Let's transition a few minutes to EOC operations. Um, are you and EOC officials still participating in pandemic-related calls or activities with other local agencies? We are. There's two things that we're doing. One is we, we monitor and participate on the occasional conference calls with the county and the state as they're scheduled, uh, as well as we stay in touch with our uh, medical director, Joel Sadua, uh, for any advice or guidance. Uh, so we're, we're constantly monitoring uh, the situation. Missouri City just shared information with the public that Harris County increased its pandemic level to yellow. What is the city's EOC activation at this time? We are, we are still at the lowest level because we've seen uh, cases go down and vaccinations go up. Uh, we are just at a level three, which is the lowest level where it's just a monitoring phase. And then finally, sir, what pandemic related guidance is the city providing to organizations or entities that are hosting large events in city parks and venues? I know you talked a little bit about Juneteenth, but. Right. We're, we're providing uh, what, what we have oversight uh, within the city. So we will guide you with any rules within the city, any guidance within the city, but we will also direct you to any state resources or any uh, other resources that are helping guide promoters and events uh, on their scheduling and kind of coordinating their events and what they need to know. So we, we will help with some of that guidance. Thank you so right. much, Thank Chief you. Partita. 
Thank you. Any other questions that we have? Yes, sir. We just have a few for Dr. Anzaldua, Mayor. Sure, Dr. Anzaldua. Thank you. Uh, before we take questions, I want to I want to um, kind of digress a little bit because this question was asked twice, so I think it's important. It's regarding the the mandate for lifting of the face mask. The mandate is wasn't meant to uh, not allow people to not wear masks. The mandate was to give people the flexibility and the option in certain circumstances, whether it's a CDC recommendation or Texas law by Governor Abbott's executive order, that in certain instances they are not required to wear a mask. So if people choose to wear a mask, they can do so at any time. And I believe that their, that their desire, their, their wish, their decision to wear a mask should be respected by everybody. And I'm, I'm certain, I have no doubt, that the staff and the city employees will respect uh, and observe that uh, from anybody that comes into city facilities. And secondly, I want to make a point about vaccinations. I discussed this last time I was here, but I cannot uh, express the importance of people getting vaccinated. Uh, we are seeing a slow decline in vaccination rates around the country. It took a little swing up and that was a good sign and now it's kind of flat, maybe going down a little bit. I want to encourage everybody to get vaccinated. I know there's a lot of misinformation out there, but I think the, 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 the data, the clinical data, the science clearly shows that there is a big benefit in getting vaccinated. We have studies now that clearly show that there's been a decline in severe illness, hospitalizations, and even death. We have data now that shows that people who get vaccinated are less likely to get it or to even give it or, or to spread it. So I want to put out the word again, my, my request to please, if you're not already vaccinated, please consider getting vaccinated. We're not going to get rid of COV-2 virus, coronavirus in the near future and probably not even in our lifetime but we can get rid of the pandemic. And that's what we're striving for. In order to achieve that, we really need to get as many people as we can vaccinated. So if you're riding the fence out there about getting vaccinated, please, I implore you to, to think about it and try to get that vaccination uh, done for you and for your family. Thank you, Dr. Enzo Dua. That covered a lot of the questions that the city has received about vaccinations and the mask mandate. One of the other issues um, that has come to the city's attention is, should folks continue to avoid large crowds, for instance, churches, the movies, concerts, and does it make a difference whether the event is indoors or outdoors? I think for those people that are high risk, people that are, that are elderly, people that have uh, medical conditions, that that uh, that can affect their immune systems uh, and going into high risk areas in those activities, whether indoors or outdoors, I think people should continue should consider wearing masks uh, and social distancing and and washing your hands. What I've referred to in the past as a three W's: wash your hands, wear your masks, and watch your distance. Um, so it all depends on the situation and whether you're going into, into an environment where the risk of transmission is very high. What guidance would you give for vaccination of children under 12? Well, right now, there is no vaccination approved for vaccinations uh, for ch vaccinating children under 12. We do have one Pfizer that's uh, 12 and over. Moderna will very soon be getting their approval by the FDA to also do their 12 and over. Right now, there are studies going on um, as low as two years of age, but that's, that's kind of off, several weeks off. So for those people that are not vaccinated, I do think it's, it's a good idea to take every precaution possible. Keep your kids away from high-risk situations. Keep your kids away from situations where they're at risk for getting, for getting sick. That includes nursing homes, um, um, hospitals, and, and you know those situations. So although there is no vaccination for under 12, I still ask people to consider the three Ws. That's all we have right now. That's going to change. 
You talked a little bit about vaccinations against the newer strains. Uh, are doctors seeing that the vaccines continue to be effective against the new strains that are emerging? Yeah, that's a very good question. So, so far, we our vaccinations are covering the strains, the current strains we are seeing. But people need to understand that strains occur all the time. And there may be strains down the road that we may be coming in contact with. We're always concerned about the strain that goes rogue and decides that it's not gonna get covered by our, our vaccination and get people sick again. But we are monitoring those at every level from local to county to state to national, NIH, CDC. We're all looking at this to make sure that if at any time we come across uh, these type of mutant strains that become more virulent and are more likely to spread, that we stay on top of it. And I think we have the technology now to change gears with our vaccinations to cover those situations. And last question, Dr. Anzaldua. Experts are predicting those who are vaccinated will need booster shots in the future. If so, when or how long after a person was fully vaccinated would they need to get a booster shot? Right now, we don't know the when or for how long because the vaccinations have just been out for a few months. We will know that in time. Will there be boosters? I have no doubt that we will be having boosters much the same way that we have flu shots every year. Like I said, this virus is not going to go anytime soon, but we're probably going to put it put it to the to the level of influenza vaccinations. And I wouldn't be surprised that every year when people go into their doctor's offices to get their flu shots, they're probably going to be offered their their COVID-19 vaccination along with their with their with their flu vaccination and there may be a situation where it may be in a combo in a combination situation. So again, this coronavirus is not going away anytime soon, but it can be managed and the pandemic can be put to an end. And I'm sorry, one last question that came to the city's attention yesterday. It's hurricane season. Um, we're, we still have the pandemic. There's also supposedly a blood shortage. And so have, has that come to your attention? Are you aware of other blood drives? Are there any other issues that have come to your attention? Well, I will say that there's always a blood shortage. I've never heard of a situation where there is a, where there is an oversupply of blood. Blood can always be used and in particular in catastrophic situations. We saw it in Harvey, we're seeing it now. In, in catastrophic situations and crisis, people need blood. So my, I encourage anybody that can to call the blood bank and see what their needs are and to please give it because your donation of blood may very well save a life. Thank you so much, Dr. Anzaldua. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No, sir. Okay, so that comes to a, our close on our, our video conference today. But I want to take this opportunity, uh, Missouri City, uh, just to say a few words. Uh, back in January of 2021, uh, we started this uh, video conference, especially geared towards COVID. I want to take this opportunity to thank my colleagues on City Council who have took the time to join me on several of these conferences along with the city's executive administration, as well as our fire chief, Mario Partita. Uh, he's been here with me uh, throughout the whole entire uh, COVID conference that we have. And also Dr. Joe Anzandula. He's been a medical physician and advisor to City of Missouri City. I wanna take this opportunity to thank him for his time that he's you know, working, but he made the time to come out here and to take care of this. Also, uh, so many key staff and departments that's behind the scenes that have been working so hard to bring these COVID video conferences live to you, especially our city's communication department. I um, want to take this time to recognize each of them, uh, Stacy Walker, Cliff, as well as Doug and the rest of the team to allow for us to come in front of you, whether it's 15 minutes or 30 minutes to talk about what's important. As I've told you this before, transparency is the most important thing to me and to the city council that we have here. And it is our job to bring these focus and attention to you, especially when it comes to safety. As you heard today from uh, several of the speakers, the city of Missouri City is fully open. We're uh, completely operational. We are here to serve you. We're here to work for you and work on your behalf. 
So please address any concerns, any questions, any issues that you may have under the comments so that if we have not touched upon, that we can come back to you with the right answers. Also, the 2021 hurricane season uh, began yesterday. So please prepare to prepare ahead. And I know that you'll probably see uh, our fire chief and our EOC back live again uh, with, the, uh, with another update and talking about hurricane seasons. And also starts today that uh, our, since our city is fully open, please, I would ask each and every one of you to go out and support our local businesses. Uh, they are struggling, um, so be out there. And as you heard today from Dr. Joe Anzandula, that it is not a requirement that you must wear a mask. You can choose to do so. The choice is yours. But I'll leave you with one thought that he touched upon, which I thought it was a very important thing. Wash your hands, wear your mask, and watch your distance. And that is something that I think we as citizens of Missouri City should practice throughout and just to stay in good hygiene and to protect each one of us. And I want to take this one last time to say thank you and may God bless you.